goes, hey, Matt, how can we get back on the right track? Well, as I see it, there is only one solution. And that is for me to get my gear, move it on in here, because I'm going to bunk with you, buddy. We're going to be buddies. We're going to be pals. We're going to wrestle around. <laughs> Old Matt's going to be your shadow. Here's you. Here's Matt. There's you. There. Hey there, it's Mark, and welcome to a brand new episode of RT Essentials. Don't you just love a compelling TV series? The magnetic characters, the engaging dialogue, the enchanting worlds. We rise and fall with the drama, we cry and laugh with the comedies, and when an episode ends, we yearn for the next one to air. Okay, so maybe there's not a whole lot of yearning going on all the time. We probably just hit the play the next episode button and maybe skip the opening credits, but those seconds feel like a lifetime when a show is just that good, and there's nothing better than seeing the shows we love receive the credit that they so deserve, especially in the form of an award. But not just any award, nay, a symbol of excellence in American primetime television programming bestowed by the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, aka an Emmy. Countless shows have taken home Emmy since the ceremony first took place. Some 73 years ago, we were so young, but only a select few have managed to triumph. Want to know which show has won the most Emmys? Stick around. I now present the most Emmy-winning TV of all time. The Sopranos. Seriously, we're, we're, we're both adults here, right? So, after all the shit and done, after all the complaining and the crying and all the f Is this all there is? Up first is The Sopranos, created by David Chase and originally premiering on HBO in January of 1999. I will do my best to avoid spoilers, and don't worry, I'm not gonna discuss that uh, controversial finale, but really, what happened there? Man, I love Journey. Why spend so much time focusing on Meadow's lousy parking job? And seriously, look, you're just gonna cut to black after all we've been through. I called my cable company and was on hold for 90 minutes. Sorry, I'm getting carried away. But that's because the show meant a lot to fans like myself. And it meant a whole lot to the medium of television in general, but don't take my word for it. The Writers Guild of America named it <clears throat> the best written TV series of all time. Rolling Stone ranked it first in their list of 100 greatest TV shows ever. And the BBC called it a revolutionary show we'll talk about forever. And to think, all this from a slice of gabagool? It's an inside joke. You, you really gotta watch the show. You like Grandma and Glaze? Hey, you bless it, I'll eat it. She's not coming. Who? Grandma just called. Started crying and hung up. She needs a purpose in life. No, your mother is tougher than you think. So what, no f***ing's eating now? Hey. hey! The Sopranos ran for six seasons, 86 episodes, redefined the crime drama, and presented one of the most notorious anti-heroes to ever grace the small screen in Tony Soprano. With elevated storytelling and inspired performances from James Gandolfini, Lorraine Bracco, and Edie Falco, it's no wonder the series won 21 Emmys out of 112 nominations, earning an Outstanding Drama Series nomination every single year it was eligible. Yes, Tony and the gang certainly rose to the top. It must have felt incredible and all that respect, but I still have no freaking idea what it's like to truly be number one. Tony does, I think. Modern Family. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so easy. This is awesome. You really don't understand what just happened there, do you? PJ's on, Haley! What? Um, I would be happy to let her change in my room. Modern Family was a mockumentary sitcom that offered an honest and often hilarious perspective of present-day family life. The series was created by Christopher Lloyd and Stephen Levitan and premiered on ABC in September of 2009. Though a sitcom exploring the inner workings of close relatives wasn't anything new, this series was considered revolutionary because of its execution. Critics praised the hilarious writing, the relatable characters and believable acting, the documentary-style device, and the topical themes, like the role that technology currently plays in parenting. Many considered the series to be a much-needed spark in the sitcom genre, and from the first episode, critics and audiences alike were hooked with the Los Angeles Times writing that Modern Family has single-handedly brought the family comedy back from the dead. That's high praise indeed, but let's not beat around the bush. We all know why we're here. Modern Family won a total of 22 Emmys out of 75 nominations. 
It won Best Outstanding Comedy Series each of its first five seasons on air. Julie Bowen won for Outstanding Supporting Actress twice, and both Eric Stone Street and Ty Burrell each won for Outstanding Supporting Actor twice. We haven't unwrapped our secret weapon yet. Luke walks over there, Hurt Locker style, flips the switch, and boom, or not boom, water off. Put the he in hero, son. As if we needed another reason to love this cast, when it came time to submit their names for the Emmys, all the actors submitted in the supporting category instead of vying for the lead position, with TV veteran Ed O'Neill explaining that nobody is bigger than anybody else in a show that is evolving into a true ensemble hit. Like a real family, the cast stuck together. I gotta say, O'Neill's come a long way since his days of endlessly insulting customers at Gary's Shoes. The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. I'm Jon Stewart! We got a very, very good show tonight. Uh, my guest tonight, Howard Schultz will be here. He is the uh, CEO of Starbucks. Um, actually, he's just here to use our bathroom, but I'm making him buy something. Uh, congratulations to the US. We beat Ghana 6 0. And now, a moment of zen. For The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, originally airing on Comedy Central. Stewart took over as host in January of 1999, and satirical news programs would never be the same. Critics and audiences were immediately receptive to Stewart's quick wit and charm, and soon the show took on a new life, diving even deeper into political issues and ramping up election coverage, especially in 2000 and 2004. In addition to Stewart's news desk reports, the series combined taped field pieces, in-studio interviews, and recurring bits. And much of the show's personality and comedic direction can be attributed to Stewart's experience working as an editor for The Onion. Actually, several of his colleagues at The Onion were also hired as writers on The Daily Show, and now that I say it out loud, that makes a lot of sense. In your case, there is white privilege. <laughs> Thank the you. The fact that you're here sitting Thank there, you. and I've said it many oh. times on The Factor, the highest rated cable news show in the world, <laughs> all right? <laughs> The African Americans have it harder. Somebody hasn't seen Megyn Kelly yet. Oh, she's crushing you, dude. She's crushing you. Now you're misleading. She's this crushing audience. you. You're misleading. All right. During Stewart's 16 year stint, The Daily Show won 23 Emmys out of 60 nominations. Those wins included Outstanding Variety Series, which it won 10 years in a row, Outstanding Writing for a Variety Series, and Outstanding Directing for a Variety Series. Additionally, The Daily Show influenced a successful Comedy Central spinoff, The Colbert Report, Colbert having been a correspondent originally on The Daily Show. Trevor Noah took over hosting duties in September of 2015, and the show continues to be a trusted news source with plenty of comic relief. ER. I didn't know that pediatricians could be so sexy. And I said, honey, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I, all right. Give me a fast trip. I need the hydration. Don't worry, Doug. Just lie back. Ho, ho. How's your beautiful wife? How's Jennifer? She's fine, really. You two settle your problems? Yeah, yeah. Everything's okay. Hate to lose you in the ER, you know. Author Michael Crichton originally imagined ER as a feature film based on his own experiences working in a busy emergency room, crafting an initial script back in 1974. By the way, I know what you're thinking. Yes, this is the same Michael Crichton who wrote the Jurassic Park novel, which I hear they made a movie out of. A lot of people don't realize it, but Spielberg was involved in the creation of ER as well. His company, Amblin Entertainment, produced the show along with Warner Brothers, and using most of Crichton's original script, they aired a two-hour pilot movie on NBC in September of 1994. Once NBC fully ordered the series and gave it the Thursday night time slot, it was game over. People couldn't get enough of this medical drama set in Chicago. The infectious cast, get it what I did there, which included Juliana Margulies and George Clooney, the abundance of high-stakes situations synonymous with hospitals, and of course, did we mention George Clooney's in it? Also George Clooney, Anthony Edwards, Goose, and also George Clooney's on the show. Anyways, critics praised it with The Guardian writing that the speed is both ridiculous and breathtaking, but perfectly paced. And The Washington Post called it an antidote to bad TV. Polar in temperature as you see. He's gotten 500 cc saline. Crits 32.5 type and cross match set. X-rays waiting and the OR says they'll have a room in 10 minutes. Okay, let's get him out of here. So, uh, you think you can save the hand? Yeah. Looks pretty good, I think so. 
could. I told him you could, so he's counting on you. Peter, you're a smart ass. You'd love to do this case yourself, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm ready, I'm strong, yeah, I could do it. You're a resident, Peter. You're years from a case like this. Yes, the show was beloved from the jump, but what does that matter if it never received the accolades it deserved? Uh, what's that? During its 15 seasons, ER won 23 out of 124 Emmy nominations. Okay, but probably not for any of the important categories, right? Oh no, pretty much all of them. All right, cool. You got your outstanding drama series, your outstanding directing, outstanding supporting actress, outstanding sound mixing, outstanding casting, outstanding guest actress, and outstanding, and outstanding George Clooney performance. Yeah, I made that one up, but come on. Can we make it a category? The guy deserves it. The West Wing. Does the whole town really have to be together to stone my brother John for planting different crops side by side? Can I burn my mother in a small family gathering for wearing garments made from two different threads? Think about those questions, would you? One last thing. While you may be mistaking this for your monthly meeting of the ignorant tight-ass club, in this building when the president stands, nobody sits. The West Wing was a political drama that originally aired on NBC and ran for seven seasons, 154 episodes. The series is centered around fictional President Jed Bartlett, played by Martin Sheen, and his team of advisors who get their personal lives hopelessly tangled up with their professional duties, all while trying to successfully run some country called the United States. The series was created by Aaron Sorkin, who many consider to be one of the greatest living screenwriters and playwrights. His work speaks for itself. You got A Few Good Men, Charlie Wilson's War, Moneyball, Steve Jobs, and The Social Network, which actually earned him an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay. Look, the guy's got writing chops, and it's no wonder that The West Wing has been consistently praised for its sharp dialogue and intricate storytelling. Time Magazine wrote that nothing walked and talked quite like it. And it's just so true. Viewers were immersed in the fast-paced political world. Major decisions that affect the lives of millions are made in an instant, and despite such consequential subject matter, the show always managed to find moments of levity. Leave him alone. I'm bucking him up. Leave him alone. You asked me to buck him up. Now I'm telling you to leave him alone. Guys, I'm trying to watch this speech. Josh. The call? On the cell. Josh and Edith are standing right here. Okay. Hi, Senator. Why don't you take your legislative agenda and shove it up your ass? <laughs> Turns out I was fine. The West Wing holds the record for the most Emmys won by a series in its first season with a total of nine. It won the Emmy for Outstanding Drama Series four years in a row, tying Hill Street Blues, Mad Men, L.A. Law, and Game of Thrones for the most wins in that category, and also shares the Emmy Award record for most acting nominations by regular cast members. In total, The West Wing won 26 out of 95 Emmy nominations and continues to rank high on lists of the greatest TV shows of all time. Cheers! Well, how about the one where you go to this fancy restaurant and before they let you in, they make you leave your legs at the door? <laughs> and the girl gives you claim check number six. So you go in, but instead of food, everyone's eating their silverware. Only you can't really enjoy your fork because you're so worried that whoever got claim check number nine might finish first and pick up your legs by mistake. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. They sing it better, but other times you just want to be by yourself and binge classic TV shows like Cheers, which originally aired on NBC in September of 1982. It follows Sam Malone, a former Red Sox pitcher who owns and runs a cozy little bar in Beantown. Malone interacts with a slew of wacky characters that frequent the bar, like the beer-loving Norm, who appeared in all 275 episodes of the series. Oh, oh, blind date. Isn't that a little risky there? Not in this case, Coach. Sam? <laughs> oh, Sammy, watching you get ready for a date is watching that great matador prepare for a bullfight. I hate that stuff. You know, who wants to see a guy go and manipulate and torment a poor, unthinking creature like that? Hey, I always buy him breakfast, don't I? Unlike many of the other shows on this list, Cheers was a slow burn, having almost been canceled during its first season due to poor ratings. 
actually just about the poorest ratings you could have at the time, ranking 74th out of 77 shows. But thanks to serious critical support and an NBC president who saw the show's potential and refused to give up, Cheers eventually climbed its way out of the viewership dugout and ended up earning a top 10 rating during eight of its 11 seasons. And it had one of the most watched single episodes of the 1990s, the finale entitled One for the Road, which over 42 million households tuned in for. That's roughly 40% of the US population at the time. Cheers won Emmys for Outstanding Comedy Series, Outstanding Lead Actor and Actress, Outstanding Directing in a Comedy Series, Outstanding Supporting Actress and Actor, Outstanding Writing in a Comedy Series, and many others for a total of 28 wins out of 117 nominations. It also spawned the successful spinoff, Frasier. Uh, more on Dr. Crane in just a little bit. The Simpsons. It's the land of my innermost thoughts and fondest desires. At last, we'll get to the bottom of it. Welcome back, handsome. Uh, uh, Marge, <laughs> this is my friend, Keggy. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, something animated. Good grief. The Simpsons is the longest-running American sitcom and the longest-running scripted primetime television series in history running for 33 seasons and 728 episodes since its debut in December of 1989, and it's still going strong, with Fox releasing season 34 in the fall of 2022. Believe it or not, it still isn't the longest running series on this list, so hold that thought. Set in the town of Springfield, the show centers around the titular Simpsons family, consisting of donut-addicted father Homer, blue-haired matriarch Marge, their troublemaking son Bart, overachieving daughter Lisa, and baby Maggie. Chances are you've seen the show, and even if you've somehow managed to avoid it, you know what a Simpson looks like. That's because this show has an unrivaled influence on pop culture and has pushed the boundaries of what an animated series could be by touching on adult themes and political issues in a hilarious manner. Hello, I'd like to speak with a Mr. Snotball. First name, Yura. You're a snapball? What? How dare you? If I find out who this is, I'll staple a flag to your butt and mail you to a... It paved the way for shows like South Park, Family Guy, American Dad, and Futurama, and in addition to garnering a devout fan base that spans the globe, the series has received unanimous critical praise. Entertainment Weekly nailed it when they said, The Simpsons are the American family at its most complicated, drawn as simple cartoons. I could go on and on. Empire named it the greatest TV show of all time. The Writers Guild of America listed it as the 11th best written series ever. TV Guide listed it as the greatest TV cartoon of all time. And so on and so on. Don't have a cow if I don't get to everybody. Let's get down to business. The Simpsons has won 35 out of 98 Emmy nominations, including wins for Outstanding Animated Program, Outstanding Voiceover Performance, and Outstanding Music and Lyrics. But you know what's even cooler? Homer's catchphrase, don't, was officially added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2001. Frazier. Daphne, would you please turn off that vacuum cleaner? It's not a vacuum cleaner. It's the Dirt Scourge 2000, a total cleansing system. Is it new? Yeah, got it this afternoon. You see, this water traps all the dirt particles instead of recycling them back into the air. I got all that just from Dr. Crane's pillow. <laughs> I've been begging you to switch to a more abrasive loofah. And we're back. Let's get straight to Dr. Crane, a successful Boston therapist who moved to Seattle to get a new start on life. And I hear he's listening. He hosts a successful radio talk show, which he uses to relay his wit and wisdom to others, but often struggles with problems of his own, like how to deal with his salt-of-the-earth father and his pretentious brother, Niles. But hey, there's nothing some top-shelf Sherry can't solve. Okay, that's not entirely true, no matter how much Sherry was consumed, and there was a lot. It didn't help to resolve the will-they-won't-they they dynamics between Niles and Daphne. I mean, it eventually got sorted out after keeping us in suspense for like seven seasons. Wow, seven seasons? Even I move quicker than that. <laughs> oh, some boys go to college, but we think they're overseas. Cause they get all the knowledge, and we get all the... <laughs> all right, I'll do it. Yes! Frasier originally aired on NBC and ran for 11 seasons, 264 episodes. Critics praised the performances, notably Kelsey Grammer in the titular role, and additionally the show was lauded for its impeccable writing. But, the question we're asking today, how did it fare during award season? 
Frasier won 37 Emmys out of 107 nominations, surpassing the Mary Tyler Moore Show for the most wins for a scripted series until that record was surpassed by another little show we'll be discussing next. I love foreshadowing. Frasier's wins included Outstanding Comedy Series, which it took home a record-breaking five times from 1994 to 1998, and Outstanding Lead Actor for Grammar, which he took home four times. David Hyde Pierce, who plays Frasier's brother Niles, also won four times for Outstanding Supporting Actor. Because, as we know from watching the show, Niles was not going to let his brother outshine him. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Any show that must say, I am the king, is no true king. But in the Battle of Emmys, Game of Thrones really does reign supreme. It was such a massive story with so many characters, easily the largest ensemble cast in history, that we could spend an entire episode just discussing one of the families, like the Lannisters or the Starks. Heck, we could spend 10 episodes just analyzing the maps of Westeros and Essos. The point is, when it comes to world building, George R.R. R. Martin is on another level entirely. You got Tolkien and Rowling in there, and series creators David Benioff and D.B. Weiss had their work cut out for them when it came to adapting Martin's work for the small screen. It's safe to say, I think they did all right. I'd hate to die like your son, clawing at my neck. Not at all what I intended. Do you see? I'd never seen the poison work before. Tell Cersei. I wanted to know it was me. Game of Thrones premiered on HBO in April of 2011, ran for eight seasons, and received mostly unanimous critical praise. Not gonna talk about that last season too much. Let's table that for another episode. Time Magazine wrote, with its shocking plot twists, dark themes, and giant budget, Thrones became a phenomenon and a cultural touch point. And it's true, the show's had an immeasurable impact on our culture, especially in the entertainment industry. But when you play the game of Emmys, you win or you die, and Game of Thrones won. Like, really, really won. The series took home an astonishing <clears throat> 59 Emmys out of 160 nominations, surpassing the record held by Frasier for total Emmy wins for a scripted television series. These wins included Outstanding Drama Series, four times, and Outstanding Special Visual Effects. It looks like the battle's over, and they have won, and it's time to lay down our so- No, wait, uh-oh, there's another series! Saturday Night Live! What same bed so jealous? <laughs> you know, you've always been my little girl, and that's why I have your name tattooed right above my heart. Ew, Dad, don't show it! Oh, show it, show it, show it, show it, Nicole! Live from New York, it's Saturday Night Live, now known as SNL, a late night sketch comedy and variety series that has aired on NBC for 47 seasons. Yes, you heard that right. The show's been on and more or less thriving since it first premiered way back in October of 1975. Fun fact, comedy legend George Carlin was the first host of SNL ever. I mean, you talk about setting the tone for the decades of laughs that followed, that's a pretty good horse to back your cart with. The formula for SNL has pretty much remained the same since the show's inception. A celebrity guest will host, usually delivering an opening monologue, sketches are acted out by the cast and the host, and a musical guest will play a couple of tunes. Maybe some news is sprinkled in. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. God, he's going to the bathroom in these oversized fake office supplies. Yeah, I go to the bathroom down the hall. What is wrong with you? I just needed Why would you do this? The voiceover said it would save time for business. What have you been working on? I don't know. I've been too busy going to the bathroom. It smells like in here. Am I fired? Yes. And take that with you. Right, yeah, of course. Oh. Oh. Much like Game of Thrones, we could spend episodes discussing SNL. All the hilarious sketches, the legendary actors and comedians that got their start on the series. Yep, Steve Martin, who was never even a cast member, Tina Fey, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, and too many others to name. But we all know why we're here. Drum roll, please. SNL has won 86 Emmy Awards out of 307 nominations. That's the most Emmy wins and nominations for any show ever. You can go ahead and drop all your mics. 
and it's unlikely that another series will ever be able to catch up to that. So hats off to Lauren Michaels, who himself has taken home 20 Emmys and is the most nominated individual in the award show's history. And that wraps up our list of the most Emmy-winning TV of all time. We couldn't include every series to ever clean up at the prestigious awards show, but fear not, we got plenty of episodes of RT Essentials coming your way, so I'm sure we'll get there eventually. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Mark Ellis, and to all you aspiring creatives out there, now's the time to write that pilot you've been putting off. Just think, in 40 years, you could catch up to SNL. In the meantime, we'll see you next time on RT Essentials. Bye bye